McKinnistry, friend, amen. First Lady McKinnistry, amen. To my wife, amen. To this choir, let's bless God for them today. Sang out of your heart today, amen. God be the glory for our church mothers and these ushers on their post. Amen. Did Brother Vincent get in there this morning? Amen. Sister Dinkin over there just trying to turn him on the slide. Amen. She's like, same day, they same day. Yes, the Lord. We give God praise, amen, for each and every one of you who makes up this congregation. We're not going to trouble you long today, but we would that you would go with us to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Amen. And we'll begin reading at verse number 1. Mark chapter 5. Verse number one. Hallelujah. Amen. There you'll find these words. And when they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadareans, when he was come out of the ship. Immediately there he met out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs. No man could bind him, no, not with chains, because he had often been bound with fetters and chains the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken into pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus, somebody say that with me when he saw Jesus. When he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. He cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. I want to talk about after the storm, what's next? After the storm, what's next? The events of our text happen in a coastal area of Galilee. Jesus had been teaching the multitudes. The crowds gathered, the multitude pressed into him so closely that the text says in verse 4 that he sat on a boat and they pushed him out from the shore a little way. There he sat in the boat and taught them that would hear the word of God. And he used the medium of parables to communicate a heavenly truth to them. Verse chapter 4, he talked about a sower that went forth sowing seed. He talked about lighting a candle and not putting it under a bush or a basket. He talked about the parable of the mustard seed. 
after he finished this day of ministry, after this day of the crusade was over, after the meeting was over, Jesus looks at his disciples and tells them, let us go over to the other side of this body of water. While on their way, the text says that they ran into a storm. All right. Can I tell you that sometimes you are in a storm not because you were disobedient. All right. All right. But sometimes your obedience will also lead you into a God-ordered storm. They were there in this storm and Jesus was exhausted from the day's ministry. He's there asleep and these men begin to cry out saying, Lord, carries thou not yes. that we perish. All right. and Jesus wakes up and he rebukes them saying, O ye of such little faith. He began to speak to the wind and told the wind, cease blowing. He told the waves to lay down and even the wind and the waves obeyed his voice. Look at them, if you will, after they've been in this storm, after they had thoughts of them dying in this storm, look at them now in a state of shock that even the winds and the waves would obey this man that's in the boat with them. Look at them now, bewildered, looking at each other. Did you see it? Did you see what happened? Did, did I really see what I just saw? Look at them talking to one another. About that time, that says that they landed on the other side. While they were disembarking, while they were getting off the boat, here comes a man that the Bible describes as one infested with demons. This man, his biography reads that he lived among the tombs. His address was in the graveyard. He had been excommunicated from the city of Galleria because they had tried to restrain him with chains and fetters, but nothing could hold him. The people were uh, beside themselves because as long as he was on the loose, there could be no peace. As long as he was on the loose, they would hear hellish cries in the night. They would hear demonic laughter as they tried to sleep. This man had fallen so far in the sin that demons took possession of his body. And I tell you that sin will always take you down. This man went all the way down and he ended up in the tomb. He left the land of the living and began to dwell in the land of the dead. Of all places to live, why would this demon possessed man want to live in a graveyard? This is how this fifth chapter opened up. It opens in explosive fashion. Look at them, if you will. They're both now just on the shore. There's a graveyard. There's a herd of swine pigs. They land. Both the graveyard and the swine were culturally and ritually considered unclean for Jews. Look at them as they're looking at the sight of the pigs and looking at the sight 
of the graveyard. About that time, here comes this crazy man. Wild hat. Bloody wrist. Scratches all over his body. Look at him acting crazy. Arms flailing, boy screeching. Look at him, but also look at the disciples. Some of you all are too spiritual for me. Because they were all getting off the boat. And then they see this terrible sight. Can't you see them taking? All right, all right. Step back. Put one foot in the boat. Just in case we got to get out of here. Look at me, brother. Somebody came in here like that right now. If you don't know, you might be sitting to them, sitting right next to them. You don't know who. These disciples were beside themselves. They were afraid. But the text gives us to know that Jesus did not back up. Jesus did not retreat into the boat. Jesus approaches this wild man because he recognized that his problem was an interspiritual problem. The people had tried restraining him, but his problem was not on the outside. His problem was on the inside. I wish I had somebody in here. All laws and regulations do. They can regulate what I do on the outside. But until something comes that touches me on the inside, the heart is the problem. The heart is the place that needs to be touched. The heart is the thing that needs to be changed. And we can change all we want on the outside. But until God moves on the inside, Nothing could bind Apparently, one time, they could control it. But he kept growing worse and worse. All right, preach up. Some of y'all gonna see yourselves in the text before it's over. <laughs> Used to be a time they could deal with you. But you kept it in. Worse and worse. Has anybody ever felt like you were in a hopeless situation? Right. When you feel like, Lord, I don't know how to fix this. I don't know how to change this. Can I tell you that? When you are in a hopeless situation, what you're in is just right for God. Can I tell you that when everybody else gives up on you, that's just right for God. When the doctor says no to you, it's just right for God. If it's too hard for man, it's just right for God. So Jesus told them, let's go over to the other side. And when they get there, they run into this man that has all of these problems. Jesus knew where they were going. And by, I, I just believe that maybe through this man crying, Jesus had actually heard him crying before they got there. Can I stop and tell somebody here? Yes, sir. That God knows when you're in trouble. God knows when we're hurting. God knows when we feel helpless. God sees every tear that we shed. The text says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Jesus said, Come, let's go over to the other side. 
problem for too many of us. If we are doing so well where we are now, that we don't want to go to the other side. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about you now. He's talking about you. Things are so real. I got everything settled. My life is getting on track. I got everything I want. And then now, you want me to drop and just go over there somewhere I've never been, deal with folk I don't want to deal with? But we'll never get to our next until we commit to going to the other side. But, 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 I don't want to go to the other side. You know, they don't smell right on the other side. There's some mental and physical conditions on the other side. Matter of fact, they don't even dress right. On the other side, they don't have the right income. They, matter, they don't even act right. So all I want the church to do is let's just stay in our little corner. All right, all right, preach. Let's mind our own business. Let them stay over there, and we'll stay over here. But here God still saying, let's go. To the other side. Could that be why the ministry of evangelism has such a low priority in most churches? Because we don't want to pay the cost of going to the other side. Listen, this man is there. Jesus sees him in his rawest condition. This is why I love the church because. This man is a picture of how we should be at the church. Mm -hmm. He comes, he didn't try to clean himself up. He didn't try to straighten himself up. He didn't try to fix himself up. He came to him just as he was. Look at, look at him. And Jesus looks at him in verse number eight. And the first thing Jesus says to him is he commands the demon, come out of him. This is a glimpse of the spiritual warfare that's going on around us. Yes. And for a few moments, we get to see the invisible conflict mm -hmm. that's happening around us every day. Mm -hmm. And watch this. But isn't it interesting that while Jesus is talking to this man, mm -hmm. and the disciples got one foot in the boat, mm -hmm. one foot on land, mm -hmm. Notice in the text that nothing is said by the disciples. Mm. Mm. During this whole encounter, yes, sir. they didn't say a word. So some of us yes, need to learn how. Care what's going on, you got something to say. But these men saw something that day until they recognized that this we better be quiet. Sometimes it's good to let the Lord fight your battle. Alright, alright. Alright, good job. Look at it, look at it. Even, even impetuous lies. Wrestle 
grab hold of this demonically possessed man. Sometimes it's okay, it's okay to stand still until God tells you, come on up here now. See, 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 too often and too many times we get into trouble because we jump out in front of God. All right, all right. So, sometimes we get into trouble because we're trying to handle something that only God can really handle. Y'all don't want to hear me today. So, sometimes we get into trouble because we're laying hands on stuff that God never meant for us to lay hands on. Sometimes we get into trouble because we're trying to reason with something that God never told us to reason with. And they stood back and watched Jesus work. Psalm writer said, I've been in the storm too long. Sometimes we're in the storm because we try to fight God's battle instead of letting God fight. Um, uh, watch this, watch this, watch this. There, 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 there's some things that we go through. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to see this. That they are tailor made for the hand of God. All right. Watch this. These people in the town, they were fearful, afraid of this lunatic, this madman. They were afraid to go on the streets. Jesus came out of the boat. Jesus went straight to the man and he got straight to the point. He didn't say anything but come out of the man. Thou unclean spirit. Jesus knew it was a spiritual problem. Y'all better hear me now. He didn't talk about the man. He already know better. Yeah. He didn't talk about the man's mother. I know she raised him better. She didn't, he didn't talk about, and he didn't go into a dialogue with the man. That's where we mess up. At. Come on. All right. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Thank you. We're trying to reason with a spiritual problem. When the only thing you can do with a spiritual problem is what Jesus just did in the text. Jesus said, come out. Matthew 11, 12 says, the kingdom of violence, kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violence taken by force. Jesus didn't act weak when a strong man was needed. He didn't stand there and chit chat. He, he didn't stand there and play pleasantries with the man. He didn't have a chit chat with him. He spoke to what the problem was. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Too often and too many times, people cannot get delivered because we want to make them feel good. All right. About a bad spiritual situation. we start thinking too highly of ourselves. Uh -huh. It's important to note that I was this man. All right. And you were yes, sir. this man. Yeah. No, we may not have lived in a graveyard, mm -hmm. but many of us were living in some dead situations. Oh, right. right. Some of us were in some dead relationships. Come on, hit me, Holy Ghost. Yeah. And he comes in. And, 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 and he deals with those that were under the control of the devil. Can I tell you this right here? You can have on a nice suit. He'll be under the control. You got your makeup laid out. Got all your inches in and all that other mm -hmm. Nails pop. Come on. <laughs> but still be under the control. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Watch this right here. Jesus comes and he 
it shows us a powerful point. That sometimes people are in situations that they cannot get themselves out of. And what God does is God will sue up in because you couldn't come to him. Good God Almighty. He'll come to where you all better help him. He'll sow up right where you see some of us, we got saved in church. But some of us were looking through the bottom of a glass when God saved us. Some of us were, had all kinds of other issues going on in our lives. And God didn't wait until we got to the church. He came to that glass to the glory of our situation. And God stepped right in. He didn't wait until we got ourselves together. He didn't wait until everybody spoke well of us. He didn't wait until we knew what we were doing. He came to us. When we couldn't come to him. There was no bridge because the gulf was so wide between God and man. We couldn't get to him from where we were. But thank God. And one Friday evening. Uh, how on Calvary's Hill? There was a bridge builder that was out there. And he built a bridge, a bridge away from me and you to get back to God. Spray them down. 
soon as you get through spraying them down, you go right back and lay down in there. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Watch that. These spirits come out of this man and they possess these pigs. And the pigs say, no. The pigs, the text says, the pigs, about 2,000 of them, ran and rather than be possessed, they went and died off a cliff and committed pig aside. Tell them how I changed you. Tell them how I 
rearrange so long. Tell them. And in your best strength, you couldn't get it together. But one day you gave God a chance. Amen. And my thought is not. Lowest point of my life. Look at this man. Everybody has walked away from him. But here comes God. Can I tell you this? Sometimes God will win until you get yourself in a position when nobody wants to deal with you. Nobody wants to be around you. That's when he'll show up in your life. Because when he does it, nobody can take the credit but God. Nobody can come out and say, it was me that got you out of that. It was me that fit open that door. God says, no, no, no. I'm going to fix it. And when I do this work in your life, only thing I want you to do is tell somebody. I don't know how he changed it. I don't know how he fixed it. All I know is I was caught up and then I was set free. All I know is I was bound, but now I'm delivered. All I know is I was blind, but now I see. I don't know all about Shadrach. Me, Shadrach. I don't know about this. I don't know anything about Noah. I don't know everything about David and, and Jonathan. And I don't know about Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel. I don't know about this, but I know what he did. Yes, sir. Sick and God healed me. Thought I would never get well. He waited until I was on my back. To the only place I could look. Well, look, well, look. Well, he waited yeah. until my friend said we don't want to deal with. He waited until family members said I don't want to. He waited. Yeah. I remember laying in the bed one night, tears running. 
turned out of my favor. And I said, God, I'm guilty. God, whatever happened, I deserve it. But God, I'm asking you for mercy. I'm guilty, but I'm asking for mercy. Can I tell you? None of us got what we deserve. He stepped in that night. And I remember Daryl Cole's song. Everything. It's going to be all right. And I woke up the next day, all I could sing in my spirit. Everything. It's going to be all right. I kept going on. And I'm going to tell y'all what this. I, I, I'm going on. And people walk around. You know, the worst folks get in total line in church, folks. They just roll down, go on, 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 and when you can just feel in your mind, you can hear what they're saying about you. Yeah. Everything going to be all right. Same folks. Let me show you how this. The same people that said, we're we going to put this clue on you back at that. The same man came back. You can call his office and say, come on here. I don't think he's going to do the do. He's a close the door. He said, let's pray. <laughs> Instead of getting what I deserve, God moved on the heart of the one. Come on, come on. Hold on. And when I went in, God said, the man said, let's pray. And when we got through praying, what he could have done, he said, I'm not going to do that. Watch this prayer. I'm in the military. Five, six months later, I flew home. But then, three o'clock in the morning, the same man called me. I'm in Germany. He's in Germany. I'm in Georgia. He said, I want to be the first one to tell you. You just got promoted. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is when you're in a storm, come on, come on, come on. Don't worry about the storm. Just know that God will come and meet you in the soul. And he'll let you know that everything is going to be all right. So we're closing out this year. But we've been through a storm in 20, 20, 20, 20 So many people have died. So many people have lost loved ones. We've gone through some tough times. Yeah. But after this storm is over, after your personal storm is over, what's next? Yeah. I'm going to go back to tell you. That's why you can't shut me up now. If you didn't wake me up, you're not going to shut me up. If you didn't get me up, you're not going to shut me up.
his mouth. He delivered. He made a way for him. Some of you in here right now, you've been going through your own soul. Just when you thought you had it together, something else happens. Just when you thought you had turned the page, turned the corner, more rain starts to fall. So many times you wanted to quit this year. God, I just want to throw in the towel. But somehow or another, we're still here. All right, all right. Still standing. Still standing. Still trusting God. Hallelujah. Still. You hear right now? Say, Pastor, that's me. That's me. I wanted to quit. I wanted to give up because of the storm I was in. I thought the storm was going to take me out. But God. But God. But God. But that's you. I want you to get to this altar as fast as you can. I want you to get down here as fast as you can. If that's you, I want to pray with you and pray for you. I thought I was in this storm. I thought I was going down. But God, thank you for getting me up. Thank you for saving me. Don't be ashamed. Don't wait on somebody else to move. If that's you, get down here quickly. I see you coming. I see you coming. Come on, come on, come on. Don't, don't be ashamed. Just step right out. Come on, step right down here. I'm going to pray with you. I see you coming. Pastor, I've been in this storm. Hallelujah. I don't know how I was going to turn it around, but God, I just thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God, for being a God of another chance. A God of another chance. I messed up the last time, but you gave me another chance. And that's why I'm quick and ready to pray. Don't you wait. Don't miss this trouble, of the boys. Hallelujah. Pastor, I want to rededicate my life. 
already saved, but Lord, I want to renew my fellowship with you. Clean me up from the inside out. Clean me up from the inside out. Wash me. Wash me, God. Cleanse me, God. Make me all of you. Give me my joy, God. Give me my peace, God. Give me joy in the Holy Ghost, God. I do not. Let's get the hand right where you are. Come on, come on. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. If that's you, just step out of this aisle. I want to see what I'm praying for. Come on, that's you, just step out. Don't be ashamed. You're not going to leave the way you came in here today. You're not leaving the way you came in here today. Hallelujah. God's going to come on. Just step right down here. Just step right down here. Hallelujah. We're not leaving the way we came in. Hallelujah. 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 Do it again, God. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, Zion. Come on, Zion. Come on. Open your mouth and praise him. Open your mouth and give him glory in this house. God created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit. I thank you right now that God, we can't go down far enough that you can't reach us. So Father, we say you have your way. Touch right now. Cleanse right now. Restore right now. Deliver right now. Set free right now. In the name of Jesus. Come out in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. Give us your mind.
Virgin Mary. You believe he died on the cross for you and me. You believe that he paid your sin debt. Amen. You believe that he was resurrected on the third day morning. You believe that he did that for you. And that he paid your debt. You believe that in your heart. Can you confess that with your mouth? God, I believe that. Amen. The Bible says you believe in your heart. Confess it with your mouth. Amen. It's the same. Hallelujah. Biblical name? Stephen. Stephen. Uh, Stephen. 